Welcome to Alchemy Uncensored, a podcast presented by Alchemy Search, a team of professional financial and tax recruiters. Our podcast is dedicated to providing valuable insights into the financial and tax sector of the UE by discussing the challenges and opportunities faced by employers and job seekers. Alchemy Uncensored is the perfect podcast for those looking to gain a competitive edge in the finance, accounting and tax industry of the UE. Stay informed on the latest job market trends, developments and conversations to stay ahead of the game. Tune into our podcast to be part of this insightful conversation. Hello, I'm Conor McHugh. I'm the founder of Alchemy Search. Today I've got my right-hand lady, Wiam Kamal, with me. And we're going to chat about the latest market insights and developments for job seekers, but also hiring managers across the UAE. Yeah, it's going to be quite an interesting, I think, episode. I've never, I've heard a lot of podcasts. I've never been on a podcast, so uh, it's going to be quite good, I think, today. So um, before we dive in, um, Connor, can you tell everybody kind of about what our team is like, like the different people on the team and different things that we focus on? Yeah, so Alchemy, we're 18 months in existence for our sins. We're, we've grown to a 10-person headcount now. We're split between, you know, accounting finance and also we have a tax wing as well but we're covering sort of all roles from newly qualified up to CFO level. Um, the tax desk is one at the moment with Rudika but also we have Pooja. We'll come back from her baby eventually please yeah. God. And soon. Op- <laughs> soon. October from what we're told um, and then obviously in the finance desk you know we've got yourself leading out your desk with Serby and Graham. And then on the other side, we've got Lewis and Jeff. So yeah, all we're specializing in is obviously finance and tax is our, our bread and butter. Yeah. So um, why are we doing this? I mean, why are we setting up a podcast? You know, what's the purpose behind this really? Well, with the podcast now, I've just had a, the cameras on me and I've realized <laughs> I have a bald spot developing in my head. So thank you. That's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's getting worse from what I can see. Uh, Look, the reason for the podcast is we want to grow our community, we want to grow our reach, um, and also we want to give back, uh, you know, to our network. The nature of our job is that we get the same questions quite a lot uh, on a daily basis. So I think if we can answer a lot of the questions that candidates or hiring managers are looking for through a podcast, and yeah, I guess it's just evolving the business. You know, we still are a startup and we're looking at ways to... uh, you know, get the brand out there in the right yeah, manner. Reach, reach as many people as possible. Exactly. As well and just exactly. And we want to be a bit different. You know, we don't want to be too uh, corporate in this podcast, hence the uncensored nature. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, we want it to be a bit of fun. And hopefully if you can help, help a few candidates out, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, because there's a lot of, I think, um, frequently asked questions, I guess, in the job market here. So hopefully this will, you know, kind of answer a lot of them um, Mm. from that perspective. So um, with that then, so a lot of people relocate to UAE. It's majorly, I think, an expat-driven market as well as compared to a lot of different parts in the world. Um, So, you know, what would your number one advice be for anybody that at the moment is, you know, relocating or looking to get a job within the finance or accounting sector? You know, how should they go about it? Well, look, like anything, I think you need to do your homework beforehand. Yeah. Um, work out, you know, how the market is. Speak to specialist recruiters, you know, not just us. There's other recruiters in the market and the bigger firms that will have a, a finance accounting desk. Because you just need to, you know, do as much fact-finding as you can beforehand. Um, look, the reality is we, we write lots of articles, give a lot of content with that. But, you know, you have a big advantage being here on the ground. Um, if you're not here, you know... Lewis speaks to a lot of uh, British candidates who are on three months notice period and, you know, they, they feel they can get the uh, get a job sat on a desk in London. Uh, it's very difficult because we've already got these guys from London who are on the ground who are immediately available. So yeah. that's the big, the, the big difference, you know, for a lot of newly qualified roads up to mid-level. The notice periods here are probably one month. Yeah. Well, obviously in the UK, for example, newly qualified guys are on three months. So yeah. it really puts them at a big disadvantage. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah. Being here, doing your homework, you know, reach out if, to the right recruiter. Yeah, reach out to and then even through your own network, like people will know someone maybe in Dubai. Try and connect with the right people because they'll know people yeah. in this space. Um, so yeah, it, don't just rely on recruiters because unfortunately we don't get all the jobs. Yeah, uh, that's true, yeah. Don't fill all the jobs. So 
yeah, I think just spreading your wings, try and get as much information as possible. Yeah. So with getting in touch then with, you know, either a recruiter or a hiring manager, you know, what would your advice be? Like how, you know, there's so much information out there. Like how do you, you know, how do you approach them? Um, you know, what would you advise them? Like in what kind of way should, should they so do look, that? So the, the, there's lots of things. If you, a lot of people come out here on holidays. Yeah. So if you're going to be in Dubai... Probably not now with the summer coming. Um, yeah. But if you're going to be here later in the year, plan your trip. Say to a recruiter, I'm going to be here. Let's meet. Get in with the business networks. You're yeah. going to have people from pretty much any country in the world here. So if you're from that country, try and get the links for that. Get in with the business networks, friends that know people and meet them for a coffee. Um, you know, get your name out there because the reality is for, I think, any recruiter in Dubai, or people hiring, there's a lot more candidates than jobs. Yeah. So for us, it's getting the jobs on, which is the tricky part. For the most part, we should have the candidates. So yeah. you're just one of a hundred otherwise. So as a candidate, then you'd need to be a lot more active than passive. You know, you said networking, for example. So can you if build you, on that? Like, how do you how do you go about it? Because it's quite like it's hard to navigate around that, especially if you're new to the market. Where do you go? Um, look, if you're not visible. You are <laughs> invisible. invisible. So, you know, you're not going to be seen. And uh, that's the biggest thing here is that because the recruitment space is not that developed here, it's quite immature, you know, people aren't just going to find you. It's not like you're just sat at home and you get a phone call every day for different jobs. You need to be visible. Um, you need to get out. You need to meet people, make the right connections. Look, it's like anything. There's going to be luck involved. Yeah. Um, but as they say, luck is when determination meets opportunity and keep that one. Uh, but, you know, you need to get yourself out there yeah. amongst it all. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about, you know, business clubs, networking from that perspective, because there's a lot that's going on in Dubai, right? So where would you advise someone to go first? You know, where should they look? Um, I'd always say work from your family tree down, yeah. um, you know, you know, if you family and someone knows someone in Dubai, try and connect to that person because everyone's always going to go the extra mile for someone they know or they have a relationship with. Otherwise, you're just one of 100 people messaging the same person. Yeah. So they're not, why would they? There's nothing really in for them. So, you know, going from family down. Then with the business networks, you know, if, for example, if you're into sport, you know, there's a lot of sporting clubs here, you know, Irish people, there's Gaelic football clubs, you know, you get in touch with them, someone will know someone within the club, you know, rugby clubs, whatever it may yeah. be. So it's just thinking outside the box where if you just rely on LinkedIn, as great as LinkedIn is, and, uh, you know, UAE is probably the most active country in the world, I think, for LinkedIn. So any job that gets advertised like thousands. within a day, there's a thousand people in a black hole. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, of course, some boys will get jobs. But yeah. the reality is what people forget and what LinkedIn forget and AI forget and everything does forget is that anybody can write a CV. Yeah. So. Well, you can ask chat GPT probably to write yeah, a CV no. now. <laughs> write uh, me the best CV ever. Yeah, you know, I could say I'm CFO or whatever. I wouldn't be a very good one. But, you know, I can say that and I could get myself an interview and maybe a blag it, maybe not. But I'm sure I'd be found out. Yeah. But. Anyone can write a CV and that's not changing. Yeah. Uh, so it's all about meeting the person because in UE, it's professional matchmaking. Yeah. Um, it's putting people, different cultures, same cultures. You know, diversity inclusion is very important. But at the same time, people like what they are used to and what they know. Yeah. Um, the big point I was making, you know, earlier on was that when a CV comes true, if I see an Irish CV... I know straight away if it's relatively good based on the education. You know, we yeah. think all leaving cert points are A-level equivalent. While if I get a CV from, I don't know, Le Lebanon or India, it could be the best university, the best of everything, and I wouldn't yeah. have a clue if it's a good CV or not. Yeah. So that's the reality is if you get your CV put in front of the right person, you're off. Yeah, yeah. And as part of being active, you know, how important do you think it is to build your brand, you know, using things like LinkedIn, job boards and things like that? Yeah, so the branding piece, you know, definitely don't build your brand too much on Instagram um, on a weekend in Dubai. But because uh, we'll be people, pe people do check that. So put your yeah. stories on private. Uh, you never know what, ha know what hate your we, people we, We're mean. still not even friends on Instagram, are we? No, no, we're not. We have a very professional relationship from what you keep telling me. But uh, inshallah, one day we'll be friends. Yeah. Uh, no, but 
to the point, uh, yeah, LinkedIn, personal branding. Look, it's as simple as connecting with the recruiters that are, you know, I'm not fishing for likes by this, but, you know, commenting on the back of posts, you know, it gets a bit of interaction. Yeah. Saying that you like the article, it builds a connection um, from that end. But then also putting content up yourself. There's nothing stopping. If you see an interesting article, yeah. put it up. Like UAE is ever changing. Visas are changing. Everything has changed since, you know, five or six years ago. The 10 year golden visa. Tax. Tax now, yeah. Well, hopefully no income tax, but tax. <laughs> yeah, tax is here now. It's good for us. We recruit tax, so <laughs> anyone looking for tax people. Um, but yeah, you just need to build your brand, get interesting content out, spark debate within reason. Don't be obviously too controversial, but you know, again, it's just making yourself visible because the recruiters are going to notice that if you're putting up valuable insights or if you're building good rapport, um, big thing out here is emails. When you reach out to people, you know, make sure you know how to spell the person's name. I, 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 I get your corner. Yeah. <laughs> My name is not that complicated as well, but I've been called corner, like corner kick, <laughs> Connor E or at the end. But, uh, you know, if you're going to reach out to me, just make sure you spell the name yeah. correctly. Uh, I appreciate for some names they're quite long and more complicated, but you know, five words isn't, yeah. or letters even. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and don't be just copy and pasting your CV into it. Like we get these emails, they're like short novels. I'm not reading them. Yeah. Um, keep it concise. Make sure your font is aligned the whole way because Otherwise, you're just going to go into a recruiter's black hole. And that's just being... Yeah, because uh, we get hundreds and hundreds of those. So we can tell when something's been copy-pasted. Yeah. And no, look, it's it's the same for us. Like, we're, we're, we're like a LinkedIn as well. We're constantly getting people contacting us. Um, and the ones that really stand out, I would say people that get referred to us. Yeah. You know, referrals are usually the strongest candidates. So, and people are putting their relationship and trust in referring that person. So if I have someone that I highly respect or rate as an accountant and they say, hey, yeah. speak to this guy, you know, I probably will speak to them. Well, maybe if they just reach out directly with a, you know, a love story of message mm. that, you know, I'm not going to, I may respond, I may not, but it's quite difficult. Um, and yeah, that's how I would position it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, LinkedIn is a really big thing. I mean, even for us, I think for people underestimate how many people use LinkedIn and how much stuff that goes into that. Like we post a lot of things on LinkedIn content, et cetera. But, you know, as a recruiter, we know, you know, our audience and who we're helping, but you know, for finance people, let's say, you know, if they're on the ground, they want to post, they want to be active on LinkedIn. They want to do all these things and be seen, but like, you know, w what do you post about? I mean, you know, do you put just your opinion? Do you, you know, what do you do? Well, look, I, <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes you can wait for a post to come and interact with that post. Yeah. Um, you know, all we talk about is well, obviously finance tax. We do a lot of events. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of things you, you, you can comment on or, or, you know, spark a conversation. If you're connected with, you know, the business groups, different societies, they'll have posts. Again, it's just building your brand. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've all, you know, to be honest, it's only been the last four or five months where we've actually done quite a lot more LinkedIn. I'm sure it annoys a few people how much we do it, but it's free. It costs me nothing. So we'll keep doing it. Um, but now we're seeing people come to us and talking about things we've never spoken to before. Yeah. So that's building a brand properly because we've never met this person, but they actually feel like they know us yeah. without having met us. Yeah. You know, Lewis, thinks he's a young Mo Farah, all the running he does. <laughs> um, but now people speak to him before he's even met them about his running. Yeah. Um, and that's building a brand. Yeah. It makes you more personable to people, easier to approach as well. Yeah, but it's just a habit. Like, you know, we have some people uh, in our team where, like Jeff, for example, he never wanted to do a post. Yeah. He was very or be nervous. Or videos or anything. But now he's more than happy to throw his opinions out there. Um mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just creating habit where you just build okay. it up and you don't you don't care. This is our first podcast. You yeah. know, I'm sure there'll be better ones. So don't worry, guys, if you're not enjoying it so far, <laughs> uh, it will get better. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it takes time. OK, so um, I'm a finance and accounting professional. Let's say I've just come to Dubai. You know, I've done all these things that you just said. 
branding, LinkedIn, reach out to people, speak to people, coffees, meetups, etc. Um, I've landed a couple of interviews. You know, one of them is my dream job. Um, I stopped interviewing everywhere else because I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. Like, what would you say to someone that is, you know, starting their interview process already? Um, they've got a couple of things on the go. How much should they interview? You know, keep, you know, what's your, what's your advice? So be them? selfish, you know, care about number one. Don't care yeah. about anyone else. Uh, having been here six years now, companies will screw you over uh, in a heartbeat if they have to. Uh, there's very little corporate governance. There is very little labor law. So obviously where we sit in the market, we hear a lot more sad stories and good stories, especially yeah. with senior candidates uh, in the market. So, you know, what's the harm in a conversation? Because, you know, when I came out here or anyone comes out here, if there's a hundred companies, we probably have never heard of 90 of the companies. You know, a lot of our clients have never heard it before because they're in this region. It's, you know, it's 10,000 miles away from home. Um, so what's to say they're not a good company or a bad company? Well, if you go and interview, you can then form a decision on the company. Yeah. While, you know, there's certain really big companies, well-known companies where if you go and interview, the hiring manager or the boss or whatever you want to call it, maybe you don't click with them. Yeah. So you're just going to, go with them because it's a, a, a big brand yeah. maybe it depends on what space you're in but the big thing especially for all these you know the, the majority of people that are relocating here at the moment are these sort of newly qualified candidates mid-level candidates up to sort of fc level um they're not the finished article they still need to learn um yeah. so what's going to get them to the next level would you rather go to a company which is a big mnc but your boss is not going to develop you. So you're just going to stagnate in your career as opposed to going to some local company or whatever, yeah. small company, um, where it's, uh, you know, you're going to learn a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And sorry, to, to the point is it's leverage. So yeah. the reality of this market is if a company can get, can get away with saving some cash, they will, and they'll chance their arm, they'll lowball. Um, they won't pay the market rate sometimes. Yeah. So if you've got nothing else in the go, be sure as much as you think they like you, they'll still probably lowball you. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously... Things change very quickly. Yeah. No, like the, the, the market's changing. Everyone wants to... Because uh, everything's culturally so diverse here, and it's not to say one culture is right, one culture is wrong. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of chances. And if you've got nothing else in the background, you'll be forced into taking a job. Yeah. Um, and we've seen it happen, unfortunately. Yeah. So... Don't put your eggs all in one basket is probably the main thing. And just think about you. It's, it's your career. Yeah. So uh, until you get that offer in hand and until it's a good offer. And you've started and everything is, yeah. Because like I say this a lot to candidates as well. You know, what's harm in a conversation, like you said. So even if it's, you know, not to take on that role, like six months down the line, one year down the line, you know, you'll know that person. You would have known and added someone else to your network mm. and you could end up, I don't know, at what side of the table and then maybe joining in a year or two years time, but at mm. least now you know them that you've met them. So, yeah. um, Well, look, I've worked with you for what, six years now? <laughs> you always speak to for people. For my sins. <laughs> yeah. You always speak to other people about other opportunities. <laughs> Thankfully, they're not good enough to leave yet. Al always keep your options so, open. So yeah, so. you do it to me, so... Thankfully, there's been nothing right yet. <laughs> that's how you. That's that's how you know you're in the right place. Yeah. So, um, okay. So keep your options open. Interview as much as possible. Basically, um, you know, in your experience, let's say now, you know, I'm I'm interviewing. I've got a couple of things on the go. Um, how long do processes take? Like, you know, is it long? Is it you know? How long is a piece of string, William? <laughs> Yeah, good, an question. Answer? <laughs> good answer. Uh, interview processes. So uh, the reality is the best case scenario is probably a month, I would say. And look, of course, there'll be exceptions. There might be one that's just one or two rounds because yeah. they're desperate to get someone in. Yeah. Um, but in general, look, things don't move quick over here. Um, you know, things get held up. People go on holiday. Recruitment is not at the forefront of a lot of things, even though... Hiring managers say we want someone yesterday, but yeah, it takes them two months sometimes to get someone through the door. Um, it makes you wonder. It does, doesn't it? But anyway, the joys of our job. Um, no, look, the, the process are long here. I think best case scenario is four weeks. You know, first round, second round. 
then you might have a final round in the third week, get an offer out. Um, but some process can go on for two months. You know, this is junior to mid-level. Yeah. Senior end, <laughs> it can be three months. Some things can go on even longer. Um, the, the, the difference is with junior to mid-level roles, you don't need to meet everyone. You might just need to meet your hiring manager and then get the, the seal of approval from the CFO with a 10 minute chat. Yeah. Well, obviously anything C-suite, FD, you know, you'll, meet, you'll need to meet the board, chairman, whoever it is, you know, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. Um, and this is the big thing, because actually I, uh, I have a good guy, a good friend, a uh, CFO guy was interviewing, uh, went through six rounds of interviews. Everyone told him he's getting the job, he's getting the job, getting the job. Then it got to some guys at the end of the process and they said no. Um, and it was because, you know, maybe not the right nationality or fit. And that's yeah. just the reality of this market, which probably doesn't happen anywhere else in the world where sometimes one voice can just ruin it for everything. So, you know, the point is nothing's done until it's done. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've even had offers out and then they still pull the offer. Yeah. Uh, nothing's done until you're sat in that seat. Yeah. You know, and, and we can send the invoice. <laughs> um, but uh, no, they... Yeah, nothing is done here because even if you're told you're getting an offer, yeah. it's you might get it for a month and then you might hear back. Yeah, uh, approvals and... Approvals and inshallah, inshallah, inshallah and all that jazz. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So be patient. Be well, patient be patient, but yeah, at the same time, cover yourself because of course, if you're in a process and you have something else in the go and you get an offer, we can use that to push the client to get their finger out. Yeah. Um, has another offer coming on Tuesday. If you don't move, he's going to be gone. Yeah. Or she. Um, so yeah, use it to your advantage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so let's say, for example, that, you know, someone now is interviewing and they've got a couple of offers. Like, how do you think someone should make a decision on these offers? Because you end up with, you know, two, three different offers. You know, do you speak to the market, due diligence? Like, what do you do? If you, how, how do you make the right choice? Is there a right choice? Mm, no, because there's never a right choice because you never know what you go into until you're in it. Yeah. At the end of the day, every company is going to say they're great. Yeah. You know, if you go an interview, you've never been to an interview where they say this place is a complete mess or a shit show, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so that doesn't happen. I'm, st I'm here six years. I still haven't heard it. Um, so my advice when you get a couple of offers is... The first question you should ask yourself, money out of the equation, what job do I want? If everyone was offered the exact same, what job would I be leaning towards? Mm. Secondly, because uh, a lot of guys get blinded by cash here, um, a lot of companies, they throw on the old golden handcuffs um, to get people in the door. Yeah. And then they are like, not a slave to the company, but... You know, they're no going to, they're working. And These are the guys which I get phone calls a month, two months later. I'm working every hour under the sun. I don't see my family. While for 5K less a month, they'd have that work-life balance. Um, so, and that's tricky, I get it, to know without going to the job. Yeah. But when you have a company where there's people there for years, the finance function is pretty settled. They're probably staying there for a reason. Yeah. There's certain companies which it is a bit of a, revolving door uh stay clear of them like if you go do your homework check the linkedin how long are they in the job because if you're if you're sat in front of someone they're like we're the greatest company ever blah 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 they're only there four months it's like yeah i'd say yeah mate uh <laughs> so yeah. you know do the homework on them and and take in like what's the growth like oh it's well and good you want 30 these guys are off you 35 but then there's no growth in the role so you'd be stuck on 35 for the three years yeah. Well, you get a job at 30, promotion after 12 months, you're on 33. Yeah. And 18, you're happy. And you're happy, yeah. yeah. Trust me, I feel like a shrink sometimes. <laughs> People are just moaning all day to me. Yeah. This, that, the amount of dark secrets we have as recruiters. <laughs> uh, but be happy. Uh, you know, that's the big thing is just yeah. covering your bases. So... Uh, let's talk a little bit about seniority, like junior roles, mid-level candidates, you know, senior candidates, because we get this often as recruiters, candidates wanting to make a move from outside the region, never been here before, wanting to go from, I don't know, like a finance manager or senior finance manager to a finance director or CFO role, because, you know, 
they've worked in London and they've worked in developed market or, you know, so they know what they're talking about and they want to come to the region and get a promotion. Yeah. So look, the reality is, and people from these parts of the world, like there's a lot of entitlement outside the region, uh, Irish people included, um, that come here and they think that the, the dogs, you know, backside and they'll get any job. It yeah. doesn't work like that. Um, you need to have regional experience for senior yeah. roles. And regional experience, the honest reality is it's been able to deal with chaos. Yeah. Suppliers not paying you. All these things which in these parts, the other parts of the world just happen as standard. Yeah. Um, because look, the foundations of a lot of finance functions here are not as strong as they might be in more developed markets. Um, the big point, yeah, like anyone moving here to Dubai is moving here for lifestyle money security yeah right in saudi it's probably more driven towards money which is fine um that's changing so yeah it's, it's changing yeah. Bit, bit by bit but it's still a little bit off yeah uh, but dubai in particular people are coming here because they want they have family they want safety they want tax-free money you know schools all that jazz uh so what's the point coming here if you're going to be working every hour under the sun in your first six months yeah you know you want to take a job which you know you can do because the reality is, put it simply, if you're an FC, you know, if you're back in Dublin, your next role will be FD. You come out here, you have those expectations, you might get through a whole process, yeah. and then you miss out on it. They're like, oh, you're great, but uh, you haven't got regional experience. Okay, fine. I'm not going to get the role. Yeah. So why don't you just take a sideways move, FC role? You'll still yeah. be earning more money because it's tax-free. You know what you're doing. Uh, you can get settled, you can enjoy Dubai, you know, get your kids settled, family settled, you know, your wife or your husband, get them settled. Because, you know, you don't want to be dealing with all that stress of if they're unsettled and you're unsettled because... It's very stressful. Like yeah, it's, well, what people don't tell you about, you know, UE is that the job market is quite unstable, that you can lose your job quite easily if you're not performing. And if you take a big job, there's no governance here, you know, but that's the reality of here. While in other markets, it's very hard to get rid of people. Yeah. Uh, in Ireland, UK, it's very hard to fire someone. Yeah. While, you know, here, you know, I could fire you now if I wanted. So. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please but, don't. But, yeah, we're not going to do that. But, but my, my point <laughs> is it's very it, yeah. easy to do it. Um, so, again, take a role which you can get yourself settled. The first role might be the dream role. Uh, second role is the really the, the career role, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So, and then timeline-wise, like, for example... You know, when is the best time, do you think, is good for people to move here, look for jobs? Is there a specific time? Yeah, it's interesting because I've written articles, we've written articles, and I, I always say, after the summer is good. Yeah. Basically, when the kids are in school. Yeah. So, to put it simply, kids, I think it's late August, and then they get off in June. Teachers get plenty of holidays, bless them. But... uh Whenever the kids are in school is the reality that mummy and daddy are on the ground. Mummy yeah. and daddy are in the senior or mid-level jobs. They're the hiring managers. If they're off in their home country for the three or four weeks in the summer, they're not bothered about recruitment. Yeah. So naturally nothing's going to happen, especially mid to senior. Yeah. I get it. Some junior to mid roles will be filled, but when they're in town, things will happen. Um, obviously with COVID a couple of years ago, the last 18 months, people have been going home for vacations. They've been spending more time with family relations. So, yeah, if I was a job seeker uh, moving here, I'd say August, September is good or else mid-January onwards. Um, the reality is Ramadan's coming in 10 days again next year, I think. Yeah. So it'll be, what, March? Um, Ramadan does slow down things. Not as much as Saudi or Abu yeah. Dhabi. Um, For anyone that's hearing this that probably doesn't know what Ramadan, can you just say, like, what, what's Ramadan? Like, what happens in Ramadan? Why is it slow? And uh, well, just because... Working hours, firstly, are... Working hours are reduced. Um, if you're a practicing Muslim, you know, you're not eating or drinking during the day. So, and the expectation is, is maybe not as much yeah. to do on things. And, of course, people, even candidates, they don't want to be interviewing at 1 p.m. without any energy and stuff. That's the thing. It does get kicked down the road. And we've seen this in our, in our numbers. Um, so we usually anticipate once Ramadan's done, clients can't fob us off anymore. Yeah. It's like, okay, you've had your couple of weeks now. Let's get this done. Yeah. Um, so timing it around that 
does help. Um, and look, in the summer months, it's not a good time to really come here anyway. It's too hot. It's too hot and, you know, yeah, just take your time, you'll be sun-kissed Irish man. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait till August, September. Even August, September is quite hot, but yeah, that's the way I position it. Okay. So, you know, with reaching out to people, you know, candidates, reaching out to hiring managers, to recruiters, etc. like... What do you think is the best mode? I mean, like for you, for example, is it email? Is it LinkedIn? Or what's the... WhatsApp. Uh, well, I think when people reach out to me, I try to get them on WhatsApp, usually. It's the easiest way to stay connected. Um, everybody has their head in their phone these days. Yeah. And it's interesting, you know, I'm not sure other people are, are listeners, but I very rarely write an email on my phone, send an email, but I'll always WhatsApp on my it's phone. It's always scary to write an email on your phone. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. There, like, there's a, the chances of messing it up is like a lot higher. Just yeah, sit there, on the laptop. and There's something in the subconscious which, uh, you know, and then at the same time, I don't have WhatsApp on my laptop, even though I know other people do. Yeah. Um, so it's just one of those things. So people are always on WhatsApp. Yeah. Um, it's a great way to, uh, it's more casual. You get information. So a lot of our feedbacks will be voice notes to clients, to candidates, Um and it's just easy to stay connected and be visible because, as, as I said, if someone keeps it, keeps at me, I know they're looking. Yeah. I know they're active still. Yeah. And if the, if, it, if the dream job comes in, if I know off the top of my head three or four people that are perfect that are I'm chatting to on WhatsApp, I just message them, hey, 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 interested, yeah, 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 done. Yeah. No LinkedIn, nothing. Send the yeah. CVs, yeah. you know, might make the placement, as opposed to putting out a, an ad, having everyone... And then swifting through it. Uh, Having everyone interested it, yeah. in the world <laughs> or the role. Uh, but yeah, well. Because I get this all the time as well. Like sometimes someone will have my number and they'll call and they'll just start talking. Like I have no idea, you know, who they are, you know, what their CV is like. And the answer is always the same. Can you send me the CV? And, you know. Yeah, look, uh, we all get those calls as, uh, as recruiters. Like without seeing the CV, it's very hard to formulate an opinion. And look, I get it. Some people are unfortunately in desperate situations and yeah. they get a number and they call it and I get that that's that's fine but just reach out on a WhatsApp I, I'd probably be that person to be honest yeah. I'd just call, pick, up, take, pick up the phone and just call you'd be call. quite annoying alright yeah <laughs> yeah put your Arabic English persistence twang. persistence beats resistance <laughs> um, but no it's uh, you know trying to make the right connection as I said referrals are really big if someone refers someone into me I will definitely always look at it because then it's an awkward conversation when I bump into that person again. Yeah. Um, but just structuring things in the right way. Yeah. So you said a little bit about Saudi. We talked, you know, quite a lot, I think, now about Dubai as well. You know, for someone that's outside the region or some people that are in the region right now as well, like what are your thoughts on what's going on in the job market in Saudi, Abu Dhabi, Dubai? You know, it's hard to say which is best. I think there's a... Um, you know, a different answer for different people and what they're looking for. But, you know, what do you think about the recruitment markets over there? Uh, Should people be open to it? Should they go? Is it? What's look, the comparison? It, it depends on, you know, your personal circumstance. It depends what you're motivated by. You know, if you're motivated by just cash, yeah. go to Saudi. You know, do your couple of years there, make as much cash as you want because it's hard to spend the money as well. Yeah. Well, Dubai, it's quite easy to spend money. Uh, yeah. Abu Dhabi is more conservative. Um, yeah, like we do, obviously, not a lot in Saudi, but we do a bit. Yeah. Um, the market there is quite challenging um, for candidates and clients, but look, it is getting, it's, it's massive. Like Saudi, if, you know, people compare Saudi to UAE, you know, it's like comparing Ireland to England, for example, like it's a lot bigger. Um, there's obviously a lot of great things, initiatives that are happening there, but the reality is it's still a good few years away getting to the UE level of lifestyle. Um, yeah. And that's fact uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, Dubai has really boomed, I think, the last year or two, a lot of hiring done. But th the reality of the market for anyone who's not here is that Abu Dhabi obviously has the cash, you know, they have all the money. Um, there's a lot of investment. There's a lot of opportunities. If I was a senior finance person, there's probably going to be more for you in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Um, the government, sovereign wealth funds, you know, there's a lot of new companies setting up there with a lot of money behind them. Dubai, on the other hand, doesn't have the the cash from oil and gas. It's very reliant on obviously tourism. And to be fair, they've done so well out of that. So that will keep things ticking along. Um, but the challenge, you know, every candidate emails, hi, Connor. 
I want to come to Dubai. I want to work for a big multinational company. Sort me out. I was like, the reality is, it's Dubai. If a role gets advertised in MasterCard or Visa, CFO, FD, you'll have to be go through their own intranet. Yeah. It'll go all around the world in their offices. Anyone who's very good and has, is in a position where they go, of course they're going to put the hand up for Dubai. Yeah. Um, if the same thing for Riyadh, depending on the situation, they might be interested, but Dubai will attract a lot of people for the role. So it's highly competitive. Yeah. So you've got to think of it. If you're a CFO looking for all Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, Dubai is going to be the most competitive, hands down. Yeah. Uh, Abu Dhabi is not going to be as competitive as Dubai. But it has the it still has a very good lifestyle, you know. It's getting, I quite like Abu Dhabi. Yeah, well, you are Miss Abu Dhabi. So if anyone doesn't follow, follow we am on LinkedIn. <laughs> weekly, weekly photos. Going weekly around, Abu Dhabi posts. Prancing around with Rutika. Branding. <laughs> branding, good branding. Uh, and then look with Saudi, it's getting better, definitely. Um, but things are slow, and it, it can be a big culture shock um, for people going into that thing. I actually quite liked Riyadh when I was there, but. It's yeah, still, I remember you were sending yeah. me voice notes all. Yeah, back Um So yeah, no, it was. Uh, it's getting better, but we're we're not too. We're doing bits in in Saudi, but I wouldn't position us as being an expert either. Um, yeah. There'll be other agencies, you know, Rob Walters, where I used to work. They have a Saudi desk that will be dedicated to that, um, yeah. and they're very very busy, by all accounts. But you know, getting paid, you know, yeah, inshallah, you will get paid at some point. But uh, yeah, for us, it's just not worth the the hassle really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, and then from your side, you know, you've worked in recruitment in both London, you've worked in recruitment in Dubai. Is there anything that people should be aware of from a culture nuances of interviews? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's very different. In London, you'd have uh, lawyers or solicitors onto you, HR would... You know, they wouldn't believe some of the things that can be said here. Yeah. Look, the reality is it makes our job easier. So, yeah. you know, long may it last to an extent. But that is a big difference here. And that's why I really push getting with your own networks. Try and meet people from your area, countries, or like-minded people because they're going to bump you through. And I think, actually, a point we missed earlier on was especially for accountants, tax people, most of them will have a professional qualification. Try and connect with your institute, ACCA, ACA, CFA, CFA, CPA, because these guys, again, they're going to like, they're going to respect you. You've done the same qualification. They're going to know people. And that's not nationality. That's open to anyone for the most part, especially ACCA, um, yeah, ICAW, English and Wales. So get in with these people because they're going to know hiring managers. And again, that's like a referral pushing you through, pushing you through the door. So um, yeah, get in with those people because it's just getting the skipping the queue yeah um so what else i mean uh handshakes you know things like that just culture and nuances during the yeah, interviews so there COVID the is halas <laughs> so you can handshake now no no fist bumps no fist bumps lewis fist no bumps. high fives no high fives no <laughs> wet although if you're high fiving no you no just no, no wet fishes yeah uh yeah handshakes they're back in super yeah. cool uh, so yeah, handshakes, good eye contact. I guess sorry, if, you, if you're interviewing any government companies, if it's a female in Rati, you do not offer the hand, uh, you know, unless they offer the hand to you, then shake hands. If not, just... Yeah, this is quite important, I think, just because... Yeah, little things, especially if you're, if you're new. I didn't know things, that yeah. until, I, until I came into the region. Uh, so, you know, let them lead. Um, but yeah, look, handshakes... And have questions, like, uh, for candidates. It's a two-way street, you know. They need the person as well. That's why they're interviewing. Like, candidates sometimes go into the interviews with, uh, they're at the mercy of the hiring manager or the, or the company. Have questions for them. You know, there's one thing you can control before an interview, and that is questions you want to ask them. Yeah. Because hiring managers, you don't know what's going on in their life. They could be going through some personal stuff. They could be swamped in work and they're just doing this because their boss told them to do the interview yeah so if you just answer the same generic questions i'm here i want to be here blah 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 yeah, grand the same questions same answers the next person well if you ask questions they have to engage they have to stimulate their mind per se that like these are all the things which they're not going to be doing if you're just asking the same 
answers to everything. So yeah. have questions, push back on them, say, why are you here? Oh, I seen yeah. you in the company. Why, why should I join? Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but again, and maybe that's for a second round. Don't go, don't go all guns <laughs> blazing in the first round. But you know, at the same time, you, if you do the homework on the hiring manager, I've seen you've been with them five years. Why have you been with them five years? Why have you stayed? Oh, you're with them three months. What's it been like? Get them talking. Yeah, uh, it's a two way street. Like I always say to candidates before going to an interview, candidates are always in the mindset like they're being assessed, but they should also assess the company because mm. it's a two way assessment. I mean, if you don't like the way that the interviewer, the company is, then, you know, why should you? Mm. Do you remember when I interviewed you? It was 15 minutes. Not even. You just told <laughs> ten me. Minutes, ten minutes. You just told me you like eating fire. Fire. <laughs> what was it? Fire performer? That was it. That was done. Yeah. And you like to go out. And we shook hands. It's firm handshake, yeah. Though. yeah, very firm handshake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, it, it, it's it's two way street, and that's why if you don't ask these questions, you can prepare these questions, build up the rapport, and then go from there. Yeah. But pe people got to remember, an interview is a forty five minute chat. Yeah, you're not for the most part you're not doing anything with the job. You know all the skills in your CV, you're not really showing them. It's a chat. Yeah. So if you're more confident going to an interview. Of course, there's a better chance you get in the job. I've never heard a person get an offer, feedback, very, very insecure, very introverted, doesn't yeah. speak, nervous, mumbles. Yeah, we're going to offer them the job. Doesn't happen. So, uh, yeah. and that's to the earlier point, interview as much as possible because the more you interview, the more confident you're going to be. The more confident you're going to be, the better you come across and it improves your technique, especially for accountants and tax people where a lot of their work is behind a laptop, it's behind what they can do in a Excel, pivot tables, all that, all the good stuff, yeah. uh, which you can't assess from chatting. Yeah. That's why I left accountancy, I got found out. <laughs> uh, but yeah. You were, you were better in front of the camera. <laughs> yes, I was a good <laughs> interview, I was a good interview, I think, but yeah. So there's like a lot of cultural nuances, I guess, like between, you know, the differences and, and the, in the job market processes. So let's, turn the tables a little bit from candidate side to sort of employer oh, side. <laughs> the hiring managers. Yeah. Mm. Can we just dig into that a little bit? Like, you know, what are they doing wrong? Like, what are the things that some employers do wrong that, you know, ultimately costs them the best candidate that's in the market? Well, let's start with positivity because we have some great clients out there and thank you for your support. <laughs> the good things they do. Yeah. Uh, look, just good processes. The biggest thing. I, What's a good process? Okay. What does it look okay. like? Okay, a good process is giving feedback on a timely basis. Yeah. Okay. A lot of companies seem to think that they can interview someone and then take three weeks to give feedback. Candidate's gone, and if they're not gone, they're not interested. Yeah. You need to show them love. Like anyone who's hiring, put yourself in the in the candidate's shoes. Don't hear back. I love the job, but I haven't heard back in a month. Yeah. And then eventually they get back. But then some other processes has went through quickly. They keep me posted. They're probably going to take that job. Yeah. Uh, and it, look, it comes back to the point, everyone thinks they're great. I don't know if it's a UE thing. Uh, but there's definitely that arrogance with a lot of companies where they think people should be lucky to be working for the company. Yeah. Um, so feedback. D Dubai in particular is very small. Abu Dhabi is even smaller. Um with regards to the, the companies, the reputation. The biggest mistake companies make, if yeah. you have five people interview, only one of them can get the job. Yeah. So you still have four other people with an opinion of you personally and your business. Mm. Um, so if you just neglect four people, don't give them any feedback, and especially mid to senior people, because you know we sometimes get roles and if you approach a candidate, they'll be like, no, I don't want to work with them. I've heard about them. Because mm. people talk, you know, yeah, I went through six interviews, they gave me no feedback, ghosted me, chasing the HR manager, no update, chasing the recruiter, no update. You know, that's probably six hours of their life they've given to get nothing in return. Yeah. Uh, so again, look, how long does it take? No, we're not going to proceed because of X, Y, Z. You know, people are big, you know, they're, they're grown up people. Like even recruiters sometimes... Even with my team, it used to be always a thing that uh, you'd be nervous about giving bad feedback that to a candidate they didn't get the job. You know, you didn't get the job because X, Y, Z, and you're nervous before the call. Yeah. And then when you speak to them like, thanks very much for giving me that. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. As opposed to ghosting them, which is a million times worse. Yeah. Um, so, you know, these are the little things which, you know, people need to hear and it's how they develop. And 
the big thing with interviews is that if you don't get feedback, we can't advise the candidate how they can get better. Because yeah. some people are just bad interviewers. Like, they, they don't know what they're doing wrong. Yeah. To get it, they're asking, like, you know, some people say they talk about money straight away. And actually hiring companies, you know, ask. We've had so, so many, and this would only happen here, <laughs> where we've had a, a hiring manager say at the end of an interview, what's the least amount of money you'll take to join? You know, how does that make someone feel? Like, how can someone even ask that? Like, basically, what's the least value I can get you for? Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the middle to negotiate these things. And yeah, th those things are just so no-nos are, you know, not giving feedback of any sort. Yeah. Give it on a timely basis. Have a bit of yeah. manners. You know, manners cost nothing. If uh, if someone goes to the effort to meet you, speak with you, travel to your office, yeah. take time off work, especially Abu Dhabi, if you, they draw, drive an air down the road. We've had Ab <laughs> companies in Abu, in Abu Dhabi where a candidate will go the whole way down and then they don't show up for the interview. The, the hiring manager says, oh, no, we'll reschedule the interview. You know, well, jokers. Um, so these are the things which the reputation, they just don't care. And it will eventually come back when, when they're struggling to get the talent because there is a, it's a very easy to hire people when everyone's out of a job. Yeah. The reality of the market now is that majority of people are in work now. Yeah. A lot of people that unfortunately may have lost their, their, their jobs have left the region. Yeah. There's people coming in still. Yeah, I get that. But it's a very different market now where when we approach candidates, they're in jobs. Yeah. And yet hiring companies still think they can offer COVID level uh, salaries. We'd won the other week. <laughs> I won't go into that now. We won't disclose the name of them. But uh, they, uh, they're, they're making an offer of something that someone would get three years ago who was out of a job. Uh, the times have moved on, you know, cost of living, all that, petrol, inflation, inflation all that <laughs> stuff, you know, and the price of property in Dubai now is booming. So all these things are pushing salaries up. Yeah. You know, you're always knocking on my door looking for a raise. <laughs> and Bernice. <laughs> <laughs> so like these things then don't, I mean, how do you see it different to what's happening, for example, in a developed market like London? Like, you know, are we treated differently? Are people, you know, the process different from that sense? Uh, well, I always say common sense is not very common no. in this part of the world. Uh, <laughs> because it's so multicultural, and this is the biggest challenge I found when I came here, you could be in a room with a, a Pakistani guy there, Indian guy there, uh, Australian guy there, and a Lebanese guy here. Everyone will have a different view in life. And everyone has some rights, some wrongs. Different experiences. Different experiences, yeah. you know. You know, the the Pakistani guy might look at me and say, why do you drink five pints? You know, why would you do that? Doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Well, obviously in, you know, sort of European culture, there's, you know, people have drinks. And then I'd look at him or her and say, you know, why do you have five wives? Yeah. You know, one, it's four one, wives. one would be... Four, four wives. Four. Five, five is not allowed. Four is one, <laughs> one would be painful enough. Imagine listening to five and moaning at you. Uh, but again, everyone's different. And that's how processes are different here, how people are treated here. Like, unfortunately, you know, there is some times where people are very rude. And, that, and that's across the board, not just, uh, you know, Europeans can be just as bad as anyone the way they yeah. can treat some people here. So yeah. there is that challenge, I think, where in other parts of the world, you just can't say those things. Yeah. Like also, I think the biggest thing for hiring managers, like you never know what side of the table you're sitting at as well. So, you know, all these things come back and, you know, they get you, they backfire if you're treating someone in a certain way, like either a candidate or a recruiter or supplier or whatever it is. Um, because, you know, some point down the line, things also change. So you know, yeah. it's quite it's quite interesting how the tables turn, really. Yeah, look, karma, karma's a bitch, as they say. Uh, you know, things will come Alchemy back. Alchemy uncensored. Yeah, uncensored. <laughs> uh, but you know, things will come back, of course, and a lot of people believe in that. That yeah. you know, just treat people good. You know, for the most part, and yeah. I'm no angel the best of times, but it's uh, you know, it's all it's all about respect because it's such a small market. Like people know everyone, especially in certain industries. They yeah. all know each other. When we, we recruit for law firms, they all know each other. Yeah. All the law firms, all the finance team, because they're quite small in this part of the world in general, yeah. they all know each other. Yeah. So if you have a bad name, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. Okay, so look, in the last part here, I just want to touch on a couple of things, but we'll be quick about it. Like what oh, we need to finish, no? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that went so by fun. very quickly. 
Um, so what can employers do to improve their branding? Like what can they do that will attract people? Apart from process, is there anything else like from a market, marketing perspective? Uh, yeah, marketing, look, social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, especially if you want to get the, the new Gen Z talent, the talent yeah. that's going to drive your business. It's the future. The next, yeah, the future, five to ten years. We've, we've got a couple. We do. <laughs> yeah, they want everything and Tiffany. anything. <laughs> Tiffany, yeah. <laughs> Tiffany is our social media guru. But uh, what do they want? Look, they want flexibility. Uh, but at the same time, I fully appreciate they probably want too much flexibility as well. The, the challenge with some of these young books is that <laughs> they think they can learn working remotely. Yeah. It's like, what can you learn if you're newly qualified you're not, and you're not sat beside the person and you've got to, be there. to learn from. Look, yes, have a degree of flexibility, but you can't have everything. Uh, and you got to remember this part of the world, it's an expat-led country. Uh, yeah. So if you have a local guy run the company, he's like, or she's like, you know, I don't want to have this person unless I can see them, you know, see what they're doing, all that side. So, you know, if you're looking for that, this probably isn't the part of the world for you, uh, mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, but a branding, simple things, sports and social, um, you know, the biggest thing I've noticed, you know, when I came in here initially is that not everyone wants to go for beer on Friday night here. There's not yeah. that culture of, you know, you're out Thursday night for, for beers with your colleagues. People yeah. have different interests. Some people don't drink. Some people do. They do runs, yoga. Yeah. So you have to be able to do these other, you know, points with your staff. And I think sports and social clubs are always really, really good. You know, yeah. monthly events. Um Building the the team bond, bonding is uh, so important because I think yeah. a lot of people treat UAE as a transactional work relationship where you go to work and you leave. Yeah. You know, you don't hang around. <clears throat> you have a parking space. You're gone out the door or whatever time it is. And then you see the person again on Monday. And we're not trying to say we're, we need to have little clubs of people. Yeah, you but know. some people like that, I guess, as well. So Yeah, but everyone's an expat for the most part. So, yeah. um, you know, people are usually more open to, to meeting and... You know, having a bit of crack as well. Yeah. So hopefully this was really helpful to a lot of the people in our network, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, you know, this is, the, this is an opening, I guess, to all the episodes that we're going to be doing and podcasts and stuff. So what else is on, what else is on the books? Mm. What other podcasts are we going to do? It's going to be incredible. <laughs> so make sure you tune in. Okay, we're going to have... You won't have to listen to me anymore, hopefully. Uh, I'll be asking the questions <laughs> next time. But uh, look, we, wanna, we want our network, our community, if there's topics or you know, people of interest or certain industries you want us to get people in to have chats with, you know, let us know. LinkedIn message, say hi corner. Uh, <laughs> it's a joke. But uh, reach out, ask. We're going to get, because we're obviously just specialized in the sort of finance accounting tax space, you know, we're going to have tax professionals in. You know, we've got one already lined up. Rurik will be doing some chats as well. So tax will be covered. Obviously, we am more in the corporate finance space, restructuring people. Obviously, Abu Dhabi we're going after. So we'll have our our neighbors down the road in for a few conversations. And, you know, with the rest of the team, we want to get CFOs in. We want to get women in business in. You know, you've built up a pretty good network there as well. So it's not just going to be all corporate, 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 but just stuff that's happening in the region. Um and hopefully we can have a touch point for everyone. So if it's a case you're a tax person, maybe you're not as interested with the CFO chat or, or vice versa, or if you're a finance person, the tax piece. But we want to make sure everyone's included uh, in this. And look, it's going to keep evolving. This is the first one. We've got through it. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> we made it, baby. Uh, but, you know, yeah, hopefully we'll have many more. But Inshallah. we want, yeah, inshallah khair. Uh, that will have uh, plenty of more. You, I'll have to get you one where we speak Arabic then. Yeah, wali himik mush mushkila habiti. Masalama. But yeah, my Arabic's getting good, boys. So uh, yeah, look, we wanted to make it as interactive, fun. We wanted to be a bit authentic. Yeah. You know, we don't plan to do much editing. Um, and yeah, make some yeah. good new connections. Yeah, hopefully this was one of uh, many good starts. So. Mm. really good and also guys make sure you please sign up on our community page on our website for the various areas yeah we've got a women's we've got women's page health page golf page one day we'll have a men's page no never (laughs) (laughs) so make sure to sign up to our and it's on our website um alchemy search um so you'll be able to find it and uh and keep an eye out for our next episode 
and our first guest. Well, thank you for coming today, Wiam. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I loved it. My first podcast ever. Yes. Okay. Tashrafna mari fatikum. Tashrafna Allah. Bye-bye.